first, we built a custom dash for our 1977 C10 project, and with the time we have left, we'll show you how to turn your two-seater golf cart into a four-seater without any welding. I'm telling you, this is the actual truck. I don't know if this is the Fall Guys truck, though. I know for certain. She texted me. Heather Thomas? Yes. Hey, welcome to Truck U. Oh, oh, we need to talk about that later. There's right? so much you don't know. So today, we got this 1977 C10 in the shop. This belongs to a buddy of ours, and he's going to drop it to the ground and slam this thing and probably make a show truck out of it or something like that. It's going to look awesome when it's done, but he's just in the beginning stages, if you will. Ripped the engine out, ripped a lot of other stuff out. He knows that we've got the CNC tracker machine, and he wants us to help him make a nice, smooth dash. Yeah, he's done a lot of the work in terms of stripping this thing, and it's come a long way. You know, the old dash, we got that out of the way. That was the first you know, order of business. The second thing we had to do was give ourselves a working point to go off of to build a dash because, right. you know, without this bar we put in place, you really don't have, you know, a, a fixed location to do measurements from. No, you can mess that up pretty good if you just try to estimate, right? Yeah, so we've got this welded into place, and from there we can start making measurements to build a template. Now, this was pretty easy. It was a little time consuming, but it got the job done and it worked. So what we did was, here, let's flip this up for just, okay, there we go. So we weld in this bar, right? And then along this bar, every two inches, we make a mark all the way down and across. Then you've got this big rectangular sheet of paper, and that's laying on the ground next to you. So you make your lines every two inches on that as well. Then you come in here, right? And then you make your measurements on the metal. So let's move this out of the way so we can show them, okay? So right there on the first line, we would take that, and then we would lay this on the paper on the first line, right? Then we come up here to the second line, and boom, that's a little bit further out. Lay that on the second one, make a mark. Third, so on, all the way down. Basically, when you're done, you connect the dots, you draw it out, and you've got the perfect contour, and you get what we have right here. And this thing fits just right. So take your time, do it right, and it works. Now, this is why we spent so much time making those measurements and drawing the lines out and making sure that we did everything carefully because we wanted to make sure that this radius right here was correct. So let me move this out of the way. And when we're looking at this, this is the top of the dash, obviously, like we mentioned before. And you're looking at it from the perspective of being inside the vehicle, and we are looking at it actually here from the inside out. So in order to get this dash the way we want it, we need to make sure, first of all, they cleared our steering column so that we made that measurement for here for the overall height, then wrapped it around. So we used a, a sheet metal brake to get these nice contours, a nice round edge, and we continue that on the bottom side. This way it makes it nice and strong. Also, you're not hitting your knees in the bottom of a piece of sheet metal when you're underneath the thing. Yeah. You know, and I think the one piece fit will look really good, and we got a situation here where our, our gauge cluster will lay out and a new radio. Yeah, the new radio is going to fit in right around here somewhere. It's the USA 4 DIN radio from Custom Auto Sound. This is nice. It's got a retro look, as you can see right there with the knobs and everything. It looks kind of old school, but it has all the modern conveniences of any kind of new stereo that you would buy now. So you've got all of your inputs right here, and you take a look at that. That kicks open. Now you flip this down. There's your CD player, 160 watts. You're cranking it out. You know, auxiliary USB imports. Everything you could want on a new stereo system with an old classic look is right there. And the cool thing about having the custom dash is this is going to go somewhere in this vicinity. And with the custom dash, we can put it anywhere we want. Well, we're going to make the gauges look as cool as that, that faceplate for that radio. And the way we're going to do it is by making a custom bezel for it. So we've got all these gauges from Autometer. We've got our speedometer, all the other stuff. And rather than just dropping it in flat like you would in a race car, you know, we're keeping that theme of it being a show track. Truck. So what we're going to do with the gauge cluster is give it a bit of an embossed look where it'll actually stick out into the driver compartment a little bit, just enough where you can see this edge here, maybe follow it back a little bit. A bit of a custom flare so it doesn't look like you know, a race car, it looks like a show truck. 
Bruno was talking about the embossed look that we want on the bezel, and this is how we're going to accomplish that look. Now, this little stack right here, this little sandwich, if you will, has three pieces. We cut out all three of these pieces on the CNC machine right there and got it done, then we tied them all together with our vice grips. So here's what's going on. The middle piece is our bezel. That's the piece that we want to use. This upper one is just a little flange right here that protects the bezel from all of the vice grips that we've got on there. And then we got a piece of steel on the bottom, and that acts like the die. So we're going to bend this middle piece, the bezel, bend the corners down over the die, and that's what's going to give it that look that we want. So what we want to do now is when we have everything in place is just get our sheet metal hammer and start tapping this gently. And what we're going to do is just start it kind of in the corners and just to kind of lock it in place a little bit. And you want to be really careful. We're going to tap it up close to the, to the ridge right here, not too far down here because we don't want it to curl over. You want it to bend over the die. You think about it like a, uh, like a, like a body hammer on a dolly, and you want to make these bends nice and smooth. So we'll just do a little bit on the corners, and we'll get all the corners done, and then we can start working our way around. Take your time and do it slow because you'd rather do it once and do it right than mess this up and have to cut out some more pieces. All right, so the dash is done in the truck. Now it's time to have a little bit fun and play with one of our own personal projects. Now, if you remember back in time, this was actually Matt Steele's golf cart, and it came out pretty good. Yes, it was The nice, problem is he didn't it? do any of the work, and he lost the contest, but that's either here nor there. Wait a minute. Now what we're going to do is take this cart and make it to fit Matt's new entourage. We can only put in one person in the seat and two on the back at this point, and the parties are getting bigger, baby. We need to take more people around, so we're gonna stretch this out. We got this precedent stretch kit, which is gonna give us about another 35 inches on here, right? Another row of seats, some more people, some more fun. That's what it's all about. All we gotta do is the most important thing is make the cut in the right place. Yeah, we've got all the stuff off of it, and what's great about this kit is there's no welding involved. All you have to do is make the, the cuts and drill the holes in the right places, and everything will go from there. So the first one, need to make is at five and a half inches off of the center of this bracket right here. This is mine, so don't go screwing it up. And this will be for our cut line, and then we've got to mark our holes to, to drill through. All right, got it? Got it, buddy. Separate this out a little bit. Now we can deburr all this. All right, so the frame's cut, and we deburred the edges right there. Now we can pull this apart and slide in our extensions and get an idea of what this is going to look like. This is going to be cool. All right, uh, yeah. Hold, Hold on, on, let me move this jack stand out of the way. Yeah, there we go. Ready? Yep. Nice, look at that. That's a lot longer right there, man. This is like a limbo. You could put a hot tub in this thing when it's done. Okay, well, that's a thought. So the next thing we need to do is get the holes down on the bottom of the frame right here. And the best way to do that, since we drilled those ones in the top and we've got that inner piece right there, now we can just run the bit and that allows us to locate the bottom there. And so our odds of getting the hole in the right place are much better now than they would be if we just drilled all the way straight through. So there we go, so that's where that needs to be. We come up here and do the same thing. Yeah, there you go, you can do your side. All right, now I have to do the same thing on my side, and once we're done drilling out these holes, we can go ahead and put that cross member in. Now they gave us new bolts for that, and this thing's going together pretty quickly. Once we get all the holes drilled through the frame, we come back with a 23 64 bit, and we come along the holes that we drilled on the top side of the frame, and we just do those top parts of the holes right there and make those a little bit bigger. That way, the flat side of this wafer-headed bolt will sit in there, and this bolt will mount nice and flat. Here's this week's spark plug tip, brought to you by Champion Spark Plug. When using Platinum spark plugs, there are many designs available in the repair market. The two we're going to look at today are Champion Platinum Power Plug and Champion Double Platinum Power Plug. For vehicles equipped with copper plugs as standard equipment, these Platinum style plugs are an upgrade from stock and will extend the service schedule of those plugs. 
Champion's Platinum Power plugs feature a platinum pad welded to the center of the electrode, giving your engine long life and powerful performance. The Champion Double Platinum Power plugs utilize platinum on both the center and ground electrodes. This design further extends service life by ensuring minimum wear on both electrode surfaces. Champion is a global leader not only in platinum technology, but also the new original equipment standard, Iridium Spark Plugs. Hey, welcome back to Truck U. Now today what we're doing is stretching out this golf cart, this award-winning golf cart, if you will. Now the frame's cut, the extensions are put in place, and that's coming along nicely. What we did was we got this precedent extension kit from our buddies up at Club Car. They've got them ready to go, and it's nice and easy. And like we said before, you can do all of this without any welding, so that's good. But you do have to do a little bit of cutting. Yeah, a little cutting, a little drilling, but the chassis is all done, so that's mm -hmm. cool. You can put all your entourage on this thing. I think we did it a lot for that hot tub just yet. Maybe no, something down the road. No, but we are going to have four seats going forward. We'll have that bench in the back with two seats going that way. So that's six people. The entourage is growing every day. And you got to have enough room to take everybody to the park. I'm with right? you on that. Now, the next, like the the next step, yeah, I think that's a good way to go, is to cut the underbody because what we're going to do is still utilize the whole front part here. It's all molded to still work with our body kit and the back part as well. And this way we've got all the same mounting locations. It'll just be an extension to fill in the middle. Now, we're going to cut it through the middle here, separating the holes like that, this way all our mounting locations will still work. There you go. All right, front piece is where it needs to be. Nice job on the cut. I all appreciate right. that. You did good. I don't throw the compliments around much, so relish in it when you get it, right? <laughs> so what we did was reused a lot of the hardware, the self-tapping screws that we took out when we ripped it all apart. Those went back in. Those come in handy because they've actually got to drill into that extrusion piece that is now inside that frame, right? Next up is the pedal assembly. This is pretty cool. Look at that view. You get to see that every day? Nice. No, you don't. That's good stuff right there. All right, so this will stick right there, all right, so that'll plug in on the go side, and then you're working on that extension. So what we need to do now is make up for our extension with our brake pedal assembly. Now they'll tell you to use a penny for width of what the spacing should be, so that's where about there, and then you run down this jam nut and lock it down with the other side. That way you'll have the right pull on those brake pedal assembly. Now we can start installing these aluminum floor pieces, and you'll see this piece here actually slides down in between the frame rails, and these pieces on the outside are held in. It's all tied together with the same bolts. So we got the bolts going in through the frame rails but not sticking out. Then that way we can put it down and slot it right into the hole. All you gotta do is get everything lined up. There we go. While he's messing right. with that, I'm gonna go ahead and drop in our rear bucket here for the back of the you got it? cart. Yep. Now this will just mount in place right where it was before. You'll use the same bolts, that's not a big deal. Once we get this thing secured down, we're gonna start making all our wiring connections, then the batteries go back inside of here. Looks a bit like a mess, but it should go together pretty quickly once we get the batteries in. And again, self-tapping screws are reused right here because those are going into the frame rail and they're actually going into that extrusion. So yep. that'll be nice. This is looking nice. Well, as you can see, we had to go ahead and extend our wiring to compensate for our overall extension on this golf cart as we had to on just about everything else. But yep. the floor's in place now, and we've got our dash in place, and this thing's really starting to come together. Hey, let's get that lined up All right, onto those holes for All the right. seat that's coming on in a minute. That's pretty good right now. Now we can take a look down here on the side, and we'll take a look. Here, I put that in, but... Here's the original piece as it was on the stock golf cart. That little trim piece went on, and that was the end of it, right? Because the bench was right here. Well, we made a cut right there, so this trim piece will go on to the front. This piece will go on to the back, and then this comes in the kit, and that will button it all up, so that'll hook down there on the bottom. And once we tighten that all up, you can see the kind of the finished look that we've got on the side. It looks great. So we'll button that up here in just a second. In the meantime, this is the new bench. You know, the front seat became now the back seat, and this is the new one going in. 
yeah, we've got our bench support right here. The only problem with this whole kit is the fact that they didn't, well, they didn't give you a seat. Well, there's That's a good, an option that you might want to opt for. Yeah, you might want to opt for the seat because this could be a tad invasive if you were to sit on this. <laughs> but, you know, in the aftermarket world, there's a million different seats that you can get, so you can get whatever you want to to fit your personality. So now when you're putting this whole system together, you're going to notice there's a lot of hardware and a lot of bolts, and each one of those bolts has its own individual torque spec. Very important that you follow that. You can find that information in the instructions. And that brings us to another important piece, the beverage holder in this right here. Did, did you say torque spec yes. for the beverage holder? Absolutely. There's it's a very important part. You just made that up. No, I did not because these down here need to be torqued to nine foot pounds and these right here where it mounts on the rack need to be torqued to five. Do you think I would make that up? No, never. Absolutely not. Because this is a very important part. You know, you don't want to lose or spill a beverage when you're driving around and doing whatever it is that we might be doing in this when we're done. You only use hot water to clean your dishes, so why would you use cold washer fluid to clean your windshield? You could have hot water to help remove bugs, ice, and road grime year-round in seconds. Install the heated windshield washer kit from LMC Truck. This all-in-one unit hooks to the battery and will heat your washer fluid up to 135 degrees. The unit only works while the engine is running so you don't have to worry about it draining your battery by staying on all the time. The heated washer fluid will also help the spray nozzles remain clog free. This tip is brought to you by LMC Truck. Restore, maintain, and customize your truck with parts and accessories from LMC Truck. Welcome back to Truck U. Now this is Hot Shot Secret from Lubrication Specialties, and we've worked with this before, and the thing we like is, it's the only product on the market that is specifically designed and formulated to remove stiction from your injectors and your turbos. What we're referring to is the residual oil left inside your turbo and on your injectors when you cut the engine off. It's like throwing hot oil into a frying pan. Right. You hear that sizzle, and afterwards you're scraping off all that excess oil. Yep. That's the stiction that Hot Shots is removing. Nine times out of 10, if you have an injector issue, the injector is broken it's just hung up with carbon deposits and stiction and the hot shot secret will go in there and remove that and that's what's going to fix the problem yeah by removing that stiction you're going to increase the life of those injectors and that turbocharger significantly these are heated door mirrors and you can get them from lmc truck these particular mirrors are good for gm trucks from 1973 up to 1987. Now what's great is you're warming up your truck and it's cold outside, you flip on the switch and the heating element behind the mirror will melt away all that frost, all that ice, all that snow while you stay warm inside. Now they'll stand for 10 minutes then shut themselves off. The complete kit will give you both the driver and passenger side, the gaskets, the wiring harness, the fuses, everything you need to make the installation as easy as possible. And as always, LMC Truck has these nice full color catalogs or you can go on their website, find the exact piece and part you need and they will ship it right to you. This is the Blue Magic Headlight Lens Restorer and Headlight Lens Sealer. It's going to help prevent and fix this. All you've got to do is walk around the parking lot once or twice and take a look at all the headlights that people neglect. They turn yellow, it gets ugly, and it's a safety issue too because all the light is not coming out of there. Yeah, you can have the brightest xenon headlight bulb inside here, and if it's yellow or hazed over, you're not going to be able to see going down the road, and people aren't going to be able to see you, so that definitely becomes a safety issue. Now, when it comes to replacing one of these, it can cost you an upwards of a thousand dollars if you got you know a high-end luxury car right. you know if you want to repair it though you can do it now for just a few bucks you wipe on you buff off no tools needed and you can regain that optical clarity it also protects against UV rays and what it's going to do is not only fix this but prevent this from happening in the future so that is definitely a good thing it's the blue magic headlight lens restorer and headlight lens sealer these are the Rancho RS7000 monotube shocks, and they're made and designed specifically to provide a highly effective dissipation of heat. If you're doing any kind of serious off-roading or hauling, or you're constantly going up and down a rough road or trail, you're going to want a shock like this. This monotube design is going to give you a fast, efficient response in both early and late model vehicles, and the way it works is internally you've got high-pressure gases which are separated from the internal shock oil. What that means to you is you're going to get a better ride, overall comfort and efficiency as well. Don't be fooled, there is a lot going on in these little tubes right here. Again, they're the Rancho RS7000 monotube shocks. For more information about anything you've seen on today's show, check out speed.com or visit our website at truckutv.com.
Welcome back to Truck U, and we're finally putting the skins back on here, and we can really see the light at the end of the tunnel. Look at this. I'm bringing the lightning back, baby. This has got to go, man. That's what won it before. You listen, you're making big strides. You right? got rid of the hair. You got rid of the car. You got to let the 80s metal and this lightning stuff go, lightning. man. Just let it go. No. Come on. Wait for it. That was a heck of a throw, dude. I've been working out. Man. Check this out. Mark hooked us up. Look at that. Hand painted. Okay. No wraps. All right. A little... Well, pow! That does look very magic. good. That does look good. That's much better. All right, very cool. That looks great on the front. Here's another thing. This is my award-winning cage right here. This oh, is the one Rob really, built for you. Allegedly. This is what sealed the deal, but we got a little issue. This is a little short, although the people up in the front are very safe. Yeah, right? it's, it's a slim fit, but, you know, <laughs> if you're working out, you can make it work. <laughs> That's funny. Now, all we got to do is figure out somewhere between here and here to make the cut, and then we can extend this out as well. Yeah, we've got all the aluminum tubing. I see the closer we go to the front, the better off we're going to be. I think okay. it'll be pretty cool. I mean, this thing's going to look awesome with that monster cage on it. It's going to look huge is what it's going to look. So we are off and running with our 77 Chevy Scottsdale. You know, our buddy brought this in, wanted us to hook him up with a brand new custom dash. And I think we did a pretty good job. You know, we've got a nice contour line across the front. It looks custom. It fits well. We've got a nice gauge cluster right here with that bezel look. It's far and above what Chevy put out a couple years back, I'd say. And to tie it all off, brand new tilt steering column from I Did It. This looks really good, man. I think we're off to a good start. Hopefully it lets us do a little more work on this thing for him. You know, while we were talking to the guys that I did it about some of the projects that we had going on, we mentioned this one, and they said, look, that sounds like something cool. So they put together this custom column for us on here, too, and I think that looks nice as well. You know, and that's one step closer to this being street legal, right? Eventually with the windshield and the blinkers and the lights, then we can take the party on the road, <laughs> right? Take it to the masses whenever I'm being chauffeured around, or maybe I'm doing the driving. I don't know what's going to happen. But the other cool thing is, you know, we put that custom auto sound stereo in that truck, and we've got another one for this golf cart as well and this is nice for a lot of different reasons but I mean think about it now I can bring in the 80s metal and we can really party out right we're still working on the 80s metal I know I don't know what your problem paint. is with it but we still the, got a little work to go with the 80s metal. the paint looks great you know like I said the stereo is going to be booming a cool thing about this is if you got a vehicle from 84 to 95 it's going to fit in most of those with no problem if it's another year they've got kits for that if it's a custom job like both of these were today it goes in nice and easy we've got the tunes we've got all the modern conventions conveniences with that and now dude we're just rolling in a stretched out golf cart that looks awesome i love it it's been a great day this is what it's all about yeah, you made out well with this thing yeah this is not bad so hey good day we're out we'll see you next time right here on truck you all right i'll take this man this is cool well, I, I got a little bit more to do you got a lot more to do yeah. don't do chin-ups on the frame just yet okay <laughs>